Hey guys, we're down in Miami here at Squeaky Pete's. You know what? We beat on Fords, Chevys, and the odd Dodge. He's got a little bit different stuff in this shop, a little bit more high end. I tell you what, come and take a look at some of the stuff he does here in his detail shop. Tell me, I'm looking at a little bit of stuff here and I'm going, you got this thing half ripped apart. Like it's, what is that, about a $7,500 car? Well, now. <laughs> <laughs> you got some interesting stuff in here. Yeah. There's something that really caught my eye that I, I, that I was looking around here. I was talking to my friend the other day that's got a 350 Mustang. Probably the wrong correct, it's close enough anyways. A GT350 Mustang. Yeah. And he has carbon fiber wheels on it. And he was saying, my wheels are worth $9,000. I look over here at this Bugatti. And I can only imagine what the wheel on that car is worth. What's the wheel worth on that car? About 50 grand. You wouldn't want to car One wheel. One, one wheel, wheel, 50 grand? Yeah. Does that come with the rubber at least? No, probably not. And uh, depending on like usage, so if, if you have a bad tire, after a certain amount of time, you have to replace the rims no matter what. If you go over 300 miles an hour, they have to check the wheels to make sure there's no cracks or damage. Seriously? Or, Anything. They're magnesium and carbon wheels. Why? It's because it's Bugatti. So basically, the cars came to us to just look over them. This one, when we got it, after about three to six weeks after it got fully serviced, engine out service, it was in limp mode and the computer wasn't working at all. So that's why this is taken apart. If you look over there. The so in order to do anything to these cars, you got to take them all apart to get into them. What do you got about probably about three hours of taking panels off? I what? mean, on, on average, you don't, uh, unless you need to do a full engine service, but that's usually about every five years or so, five to 10 years. The, this car particularly, we had to do it because of how much damage they did. They basically, they, they didn't do anything correct, including they didn't fill the oil to the right limits. That's amazing. And I see you got something else very interesting here. Yeah. What, tell me about this car. It's kind of, hence should we say, kind of like a turd in a punch bowl, well, but, it's in a a good, little but out in of a place. good way. I like it. My what grand, is it? My grandfather would have appreciated it. He was actually an uh, uh, insurance salesman, and he sold so much insurance that every year he would get a new Cadillac. And this is one of the models that he had. This isn't his car, but uh, this car came in originally for a new sunroof, new interior, and then a lot of engine work. Uh, it was just leaking everywhere. So we ripped it out. We're redoing all the seals, repainting the engine, and just going over everything so this thing runs like is a this, new car. Is this like a special model? I've never seen one of these. This is an old classic Eldorado. It is, eh? Yeah. See, the Eldorados, I see you're all front wheel drive. <laughs> They're probably all rusted, too. <laughs> they got no rust hardly at all. The ashtray's still in good shape. Look at the lines on this jewel, eh? This is, I mean, this is probably my favorite part about the whole car, between the fins and the lights. I tell you what. You would look like a badass driving this down in Miami. I tell you what. You need some dingle ball dice in that some gun, and away you go, hey? We can get them. Yeah, we'll order them on Amazon right now. Just get on her then. Quit pissing around. I see you got my favorite car that when I was a youngster, you got both of them right in the same spot. I used to watch Magnum PI and drool over his 380. There you and go. And you got one over here. But looking at it, I noticed something very interesting in it. Hey, come and take a look at it, guys. Let's see if we can get here. These are pretty expensive wheels, too. Is that right? What are these wheels worth? Uh, that's for a Diablo GT, so they're pretty limited. I think there's 80 cars. Uh, those wheels are probably 20, 20 grand for the set. Just sitting in the middle of the shop. Here we go, guys, a 380. But again, it actually looks in fairly good shape now. What happened to this car? Somebody leave it in the sun? So or just this, old age? It's just old. Uh, it wasn't maintained properly. So we are redoing the whole interior. The Italian cows, they're not as good UV protection as uh, maybe the Canadian ones are. <laughs> Take a look at the seats. That's what happens, guys, if you don't look after your stuff. I know, uh, I know a lot of people who buy these cars aren't really big fans of window tint. Uh, they all like the whole fishbowl look, but I yeah. try to convince everybody who lives in Florida that you should at least do a 70, 80% window tint to try to protect the interior. So you won't actually have the visible darkness, but you'll get the protection. I tell you what, there's two. 
most powerfulest things in the world. One is sunlight and the other one is water. Yep. And I tell you what, what water doesn't wreck, sunlight will. It's true. It's amazing what it's it wrecks. True. Yeah, it's true. And here we got the iconic Countach back here. Hey, what's the story on this jewel? So this thing just came in for, uh, you know, some detailing, uh, a, little, a little bit of touch up paint here and there. This car is driven. Uh, it's owned by actually two family members. So they, they switch off driving it and- Well, that ought to be interesting. The they can talk about who put the dent in it. Eh? Exactly, exactly. But either way, they both just call me. It's very interesting. Uh, you barely, it's kind of a dietation car because you don't get a real big meal through there through the window if the no. drive through, eh? No. Is that not, all the way down this window? Hands. That's That's about as high as the window goes. And it, or about as low as the window goes. Right there. Yeah, and the AC, uh, the AC doesn't really help too much either. Is that right, eh? Yeah. Here's something very interesting. Look at the window lock is, right? Or the door lock. She's, she's horizontal. Wanna keep doing that? That's interesting. And easy car to steal? Uh, I honestly don't know. I've never tried to steal one. <laughs> Definitely That's not nice. stealing it out of here. You got to get through all the alarm systems, the cameras, and then the AR-15. I tell you what, man. You hear that? The AR-15. That's important. In Canada, we're allowed to slingshot with a grate. In, and it's got to be a in, soft grate. In Florida, I can shoot you while you're running away. What's rent worth here? Uh, so they wanted 10 grand a month for the building. What's house rent worth? I might want to live here. Uh, f in Miami? Way too much. Like Vancouver, eh? But I, I was able to get the shop for uh, 8,500 a month. No, that's a good deal? Yeah, because I mean, there's not many standalone buildings with mechanical, uh, I can do mechanical here, detailing. I can basically do everything except for paint work here. This car, what year is this? I'd be lying if I tell you. It's got to be old though, eh? It's, it's, in the, it's an 80s, it's an 80s car. I tell you what, the most iconic supercar probably ever built. They're unbelievable. What yeah. do they like to drive, all right? Or I heard they're not too good. <laughs> uh, it's they're, pretty nice hard. To, they're nice to look at. They're nice to look at. It's pretty hard to see out of the back. A lot of people will open the door and sit on the side while they're going back. I can actually see pretty well through the little window. I don't know why, but I, I just, well, I'm it, able to back it up no problem. But it, uh, is, it is made by a bunch of guys that build farm tracks. Exactly, hey? exactly. Like they're, Gumball Rally, the first thing he does is take the mirror and throw it away. You don't need to know what's behind exactly, this. Exactly, exactly. This, this car, I mean, listen, they're beautiful. They're fun to drive. But as far as like the classic Lamborghinis go, I don't know if this would be the nicest car to drive. And, and you're definitely going to be rolling down the windows a lot to get the breeze. Is that right, eh? You know, this is old school as Jewel, eh? This kind of like... The beginning of the supercars is kind of like the muscle car of supercars. Like what was around at the time when this was built, it was like nothing. No, there was nothing like it. I mean, this was basically a space shuttle compared to everything else. Yeah, I like it. It's timeless, man. It really is. And they just keep going up. Yeah, right next to Daisy Duke. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I had the General Lee and one of these. What a combination. Did you have one of these cars on your wall? I didn't, but I've worked on You had most... Shannon Tweed up there instead. I did, I did. <laughs> I, I have worked on uh, the poster car with the girl in it in Miami. I've worked on the Wolf of Wall Street Countach. I've worked on, so I've worked on- The, the Wolf of which? The car that was in the movie, the Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, nice. The one that wasn't wrecked, we worked on that. So tell me something. The maintenance on this stuff, are they fairly finickety? You <laughs> don't even comment on it. Pull the engine. Pull the engine. That's, that's pretty much it. You need, you need a service, right, eh? pull the engine. On all of it? Pretty much. They pretty all come much out the all bottom? The, all the old Lambos, and eh, this one comes out the top. You know what my problem is? The scratch and the paint taking it out. Well, that's why you got me. I tell you what, I would never do where I have it. I tell you what, man. <laughs> you know, as looking at this stuff, do you work on it or do you hire somebody to work on it? I work on 90% of the stuff here or my team does. I want to know how you cover up your mistakes when you scuff the paint on them. Well, that's why I have a good team. Yeah, <laughs> the pressure must be unbelievable. I can't, I'm looking at that car over there, I'm looking at that car over there. These things are averaging from like a minimum, minimum of 500,000 to probably about 600 or 6 million. 
Like, you know what, a goddamn lug nut for one of these cars is probably $400 or more. I've had, I've had some cars in here upwards of 15 million for one car. What's that like working on? What's the pressure on that? I don't think about it. I pretend they're all Mustangs. I, speaking about Mustangs, I see you got one in the backyard <laughs> here. What's this doing here? How, how did this end up? Along, about, uh, what's the story on this? So this car was actually won by a girl in an auction. I think she paid maybe $500 for it. Uh, the, originally we were going to, originally we were gonna repaint it, redo the interior, do the engine work, add some upgrades, and I convinced her otherwise. I thought, I, I thought you might've got it in a divorce. <laughs> not divorced yet. Not divorced yet. Uh, and then this one is actually cool. You know what's nice to see, or not nice to see? It don't matter what grade of car you're working on, how expensive it is, you still have the same problems as the rest of us do. It's true. Yeah. What are those? Yeah. What are those? <laughs> People just not listening. Oh, yeah. So this is, this is gonna be a fun project. We're actually gonna repaint the whole car in uh, Rolls-Royce Midnight Metallic. What are you gonna do with it? We're going to put a sunroof up here. We're gonna redo the top. The top's gonna to be dark metallic blue. The interior in the front is gonna go dark metallic blue and the rear, all the entire rear roof, seats, floors are gonna be burgundy. And we're gonna put a humidor, a uh, espresso machine, and we're gonna have uh, electric leg rests. Well, that looks like it's a Catholic car. It looks like, you know, the kneeling post at your pew there when you're saying your prayer. Well, driving this car, you might have to say your prayer once. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this, car, this car, when you first look at it, it looks very interesting. What's it like to drive? It looks like there's not much room up there. Uh, there's not. It's for a short Italian guy. Yeah, it's a mama me. <laughs> I get in her and drive. Hey. I tell you what. You can fit there, that's not that bad. But the, the <sighs> driver's seat, there's no way. I okay. like this car. Okay. You buy in these channels, they have like dots on them. No guys, I'm not gonna try, because I don't want to. I'll mind. get in, so yeah, you have an idea. Whatever. Come on, we're gonna be I'll get late in, for so the you airport. Have an idea. Look at these knees. That's it. Well, look that's at this gut, how do you think that's gonna you fit in there? You, you wouldn't, no way. Be kind of like. Uh, you're, gonna be, you're gonna be steering with your belly. It's all right, it's kind of like automated steering, eh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, what was this, was it a limousine or what was it? So it was for a governor of, I think, North Carolina. Uh, and they drove around in it. It's like a, it's like a half a limousine. It's a 1977 Cadillac Fleetwood um, limo, and like obviously, personal limo. Actually, you had a short driver then. Yeah, they had a short driver, yeah. Yeah. You special order these cars or they just build them? I think they just build them. Cool. See, it's right here on the right side. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a different one. How the f I'll tell you what, man. Is that independent? Yeah, that had to come. Yeah. There's no way the other that I could ever own one of these like cars. Back there. I'd have a wreck in about 15 minutes. I can tell you what. You want to just like wanna cut it out or do you want to <laughs> replace it? We can cut it out. It might, honestly, it doesn't look that bad. Yeah. What happened down there? Uh, well, just, I just tried it. <laughs> it's a mama me. Stay out of the car. It's her car. Yeah, honestly, oh, right. her car, so that's why, like, the uh, wife driving. He's, eh? a, he's in a retainer. It yeah. must have. Yeah, yeah. It must. Yeah. It must have somehow just rubbed going this way. Because the other, the other one, the other one's a different panel. <laughs> we'll sort it out, though. I tell you what, I got a question. I got a question. What's with all the running shoes and boxes outside? Oh. Dude, I think my neighbors dropped them off. Yeah, they yeah. did. They For off what? So why are they just sitting outside? Uh, we just hopped out. Uh, yeah. My neighbors next door love me, and they, they own a, uh, it's a like, thrift store. And I guess, for they whatever reason, isn't. they were like, we probably need some new shoes. I mean. Well, if you wore shoes like that, I could see wanting a new pair. <laughs> I mean, I would never wear a pair of shoes like that. Hey, sure that? <laughs> yeah. Between the shoes and the bracelet, it's like, come on, buddy. This is my daughter. I get it. The shoes from your daughter, too? I tell you what, my friend, you got some neat stuff in here. Everything from, like, old American muscle cars to 
like the latest high-end stuff, eh? Right. Very interesting. Again, I can't, I can't imagine the stress level of working on this stuff. Like it's like one mistake or a slip of a screwdriver on something. A slip of a screwdriver, four or five grand, six grand, eight grand, Probably 10 grand. Probably more. I, oh, I, I would say it. a slip of a screwdriver could cost me 20 grand in a second. You just don't use screwdrivers, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Just make sure the people that are working around these cars know what the hell they're doing. Is and that hard to find? It's next to impossible, but we've been lucky enough to find some pretty great guys. And you just, just certain people are not allowed to touch certain cars. And I can appreciate that. Like I say, I don't, I wouldn't be allowed to touch any of them. <laughs> yeah, you know, the problem is like, you want to keep a clean, safe environment. You don't want like a lot of the stuff, a lot of the stuff that comes through the shop, nobody even knows that it's here until it left, okay. if they know it all. Um, because a lot of our clients are super private. I mean, we have big collectors, dealerships, tow companies. I mean, Interesting. pretty much if it's a rare car in South Florida and it doesn't come here, you're probably not getting the top quality job that your car right. deserves. Now, here's a question. What did you cut your teeth on? Honda Civics? Good. What did you start on? Uh, the first supercar I ever polished was a McLaren P1. I want to hear about what, nah, 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 you're not the getting away with that. Car, what is the first car that you ever worked on? You know, all right, so it's, it's hard because when I first started, I, before I started my own business, I worked for somebody else and I was cleaning newer Lamborghinis. So uh, start, but when I left him, I was cleaning barn cars. Like literally just people that worked for the barn, not even the people that rode or the people that owned the farms, like the people that work there. They're dirty cars with horse shit and hay and, you know, iron all over the paint. Like just white cars that were orange from all the contaminants. Kind of like, like the stuff we drive. Probably. We drive orange cars that were white. I had, a, I had one truck that took my brother and I three days to detail. Did Mike Hull own it? <laughs> and, I think the guy's name was Mike. Is that, yeah. Uh, but then, you know, I worked my way up from the people that worked at the barn to the people that rode at the barns to the people that rented the barns to now the people that own the barns. As all as I can say is you must have a level of trust that is beyond comprehension to have this stuff and look after it and for these guys to give you their vehicles. Because I can guarantee you, some of these guys, they like these cars more than their wives. I'm sure. And you know, one thing I've learned is if you are, if you screw up, you screw up. But if you're honest about it and you have a solution and you fix it yeah. and you own it, at the end of the day, most of the people don't care. Just be honest. Yeah. And the for the them, it's that, like, it's like, listen, just be honest about I stuff. have, I have enough money to pay for a new Bugatti wheel or pay for, you know, new glass or the paintwork or whatever it is. But finding someone that you can trust and rely on that you know is gonna take responsibility or let you know if something goes wrong, you know, you can't buy that. It is human nature, there will be problems, you will make mistakes. If you can fix a mistake, it's not a mistake. Exactly, yeah. and any, I think any successful business person will tell you how many times they've had issues with people, uh, ish, whether it's service people or just in general, like people they've had business dealings with and they'll yeah. tell you that the hardest thing to find is people you can trust, especially once once you're above that level and most people are just looking at you for the dollar signs yeah. or the house or the car or whatever it is, finding someone that really doesn't give a shit about all of that, like 90% of my clients, I don't even know what they do. I never ask. And it's not because, it's not because I'm not interested or I don't care. It's just because like realistically, it's none of my business for one. And two, I don't want to be like everybody else. If I have, we had a celebrity ball player in here the other day and he said to his manager, he said, you know what? It was really nice that I went to pick up my car and nobody asked me for a picture or an autograph. And he texted me that and I said, why would I do that? The guy's coming to pick up his car. He paid me to work on his car. Like he's, he's not, I'm not doing it for free. If I was doing it for free, I'd make him put his picture on the wall. You know? I like it. It's kind of an interesting thing when it comes to dealing with certain things in that end of the world. It's very, very interesting. Yeah. I'll tell you what, some good, some bad, some good, some bad. Exactly. And you'd be surprised, like some of these cars, like for example, that old Jaguar up there was one of my client's first cars. He also owns a Pagani Zonda, Bugatti, uh, Dino, um, but he likes Ferrari, that one. Monza, but he's like, Pete, I'm sending my car down from New York. I want you to fix everything and get the car perfect. 
I see you're putting a new rack in we're doing, the rack We're doing it. We're doing everything. I mean, it's getting everything. The engine came out, fully serviced. Them all, cars are fairly interesting on a good day. They're hard, and they're hard to work on. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't know what they're doing, so. Well, that's fairly interesting. Yeah. It's, okay. It's just, it's fun. You got something good in North American, or so you got a Bronco up there? There you go. Hey. It, came, it actually came from New Hampshire, so something pretty close can, Pretty close to Canada. Something you can jam with a screwdriver and be exactly. happy about it. That you one, jam yeah, that with a screwdriver, I think $35. No one's going to say anything. $35. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. and, that's how, and that's how it all started, you know? It started with... People are like, oh, it must be nice to work on all these cars. And I'm like, it gets f***ing expensive. I tell you what, I I wouldn't like it. No, you, you replace a, a inner door panel on a Honda, it's probably 150 bucks. You have to replace a little metal piece this big on a Rolls Royce, it's three grand. Whether it's worth it or not, it's like a US Army, you know, ice cream scoop, $1,500. <laughs> <laughs> so they say. Okay, my friend, thank you it for your time. It was an absolute pleasure meeting you. Okay, you get down around the end of the world, you stop by. I will, Okay, I will. see you later.